All right, we're back, guys. Thanks for <coughs> watching that break. Harstum and Major and everybody, I think, are just getting their vetoes finished up and lobby sorted shortly. So we'll be getting into that here in just a moment. Did Goose Juice just become a meme? I think, unfortunately, it did just because it's such a fun name to say. No one's giving me a better name. No one's giving me a better name for you, Thermal and a Laser. Now we got the same problem presenting itself again. We need a nickname for Harstum and Major and their opponents. Uh, practice Bolts. I, again, I don't know the actual... Uh, it looks like Practice X and Four Bolt, I believe, are the names. Actually, I should make a tweet about this. Uh, practice X and Four Bolt. This is unknown, but we'll find out soon. Where is Zombie Grub? asks chat. Well, that seems to be the case every time Zombie Grub's not here. Uh, Zombie Grub is currently attending Kings of the North. It's a live event that's going on actually right now as we speak. Fear Dragon is one of the people casting it. Him and Steadfast and some others. Tempo, I believe, as well. I'm not sure the entire casting. I know Zombie Grub's not there to be a caster, though. She's hanging out with a crowd and with some friends. She's actually been taking and tweeting a lot of pictures. So if you guys haven't seen, get on her Twitter, twitter.com slash Zombie Grub, and take a look-see. That being said, I will try and find all the pictures later and retweet them on the Base Trade Twitter, so you can at least get caught up over there. But at the moment, just waiting for the invites. Looks like the lobbies are just now going up, so that's good to see. There you go, Mobius, Mobius Factory XX One or whatever the silly name is seems to be coming up. The suggestion would be team, oh, what a beautiful nutsack. Oh, you got me. I read it all out loud. Oh, son of a bitch. You got me, guys. Team goat sucker? No, I, that would be Rifkin's team. The night jar is the one true goat sucker. <laughs> that stupid Patronus thing has really ruined me, guys. I'm so mad about that. Uh oh, I just clicked on a something clickbaity. I hope that doesn't make lots of noise. Okay, cool. Uh da, 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 da. Uh oh, we may have invited to the lobby incorrectly. I hope that's not gonna be the case. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so what's kind of cool is that this will be... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, whoops. They're asking if I'm ready. Whoa! People never ask if I'm ready. How does that work? Alright, here we go. Alright, Mobius Facility XX1. First time we're seeing this today, I believe. Swarm host riding an ultralisk. Man, you guys are hitting me up with too many cool ideas today. Y'all need to calm down. I don't even know how to handle myself hearing all these amazing propositions in chat. <laughs> but okay, brand new series kicking off and looks like the team names did work. Yay! Nothing wrong with the overlay for now. <laughs> Spawning in the upper left side of Mobius Facility. Yeah, this looks like it's an eight player spawn map, by the way, with a big monkey face in the middle. Tell me that doesn't like two eyes, the ears, it's a cheeky little smile. Fucking goddamn it. Alright, top left side, we got the combination of the European pros, Harstum, and his ally, the barcode known as Major. Who, worth noting, is coming cross server over to Europe from North America. Something he adamantly hates to do. This guy makes a fuss about playing on Central versus West Coast servers, both of which are in North America, okay? So it's a big deal for Major to be playing here, and we wish him the best of luck. His opponents, though, the bottom right side, apparently Godbolt, aka Fourbolt, and his ally, Practice X. Oh, yo, 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 Monkey Fetus may have hit us up with a legitimate solution to our team name problem. Monkey Fetus, first off, who has his own name problem, <laughs> says. You thermal and uh, thermal and laser are both light slash radiation related. There's a potential for a name there. So you thermal and a laser could be team thermal laser. I think that's actually kind of cool. Cuts right through like a thermal laser. 
I like that. I think I'm gonna try and make that happen. But we still need we still need suggestions of names for these guys. So you got Four Bone Practice X, you got Major and Harstum. What sweet names are we gonna have over here? I do want to point out, by the way, this is gonna be the first time we see Protoss today. So that's kinda cool. Harstum being the only Protoss by the looks of things. We'll see what he goes with. As mentioned before, in the past when we saw 2v2, so we had really big 2v2 competitions back in HOTS. Some of you guys may not have caught them. Maybe you got into base trade DV afterwards. But we seriously had big, big turns. We had huge players playing too. And you know, a lot of times we saw Protoss, it really did boil down to air units. And most of the time, specifically, lots and lots of Phoenix. I'm not sure if that'll be the case here or not. I'm excited to see if things have changed around that much. But Major's a pretty solid all-around player. I feel like Hearthstone could support him with whatever composition necessary. What's this tornado? What? Yeah, it's Major and Hearthstone. We need nicknames for Major and Hearthstone, guys. We gotta have a cool team name. Although, if I gotta be honest, I think Hearthstone is one of the few players who has like a funny enough personality to come up with a really awesome team name on his own. I might just ask him after this game. For the millionth time, people asking, is Protech in this tournament? The answer is no. Protech is not a professional player, and I really don't think he's actually that good at StarCraft. And he's really good at being mad and trolling people on stream, and that's about it. So he has never shown up for a single tournament that's ever been hosted by us or ESL or anyone else for that matter. I, I don't know why people assume he would play over here. It just boggles my mind. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to take shots at you. It's just like the, the question has been asked many times today, and it's such a dumb question. It's like, why, why do we breathe air? I don't know. It's because we do, okay? Our bodies need it. It's a thing. Actually, there's probably somebody in the audience who is smarter than me or watching the VOD of this that knows specifically why we need to breathe air. And I just want to point out that that was more of a sarcastic rhetorical question, okay? I don't really need to know why we breathe air because I don't really care. I can't just suddenly stop breathing air because I don't... Oh, I now know. <laughs> Although, that would be cool if you had the capability to do that. Anyways, we got a dark shrine coming out of Hearthstone. So, things are going to get nasty. Although... This, oh, did this get, no, he didn't scout it. Oh, this is bad. Fourbolt sees the robo, and you might be thinking, okay, it's probably Adepts coming in, man. Watch out, Warp Prism, Adepts. We've seen that combination, but DTs can be real nasty. I do want to point out, by the way, oh, some Hellions get by here on a Major. This would be some nice SCV kills, as they run right past that bunker. But I just want to remind everybody, once again, like, if Major, for example, goes for, we'll say, Metavax to any capability, he can heal the Adepts. He can repair uh, stalkers and carriers and what have you. But none of that may be necessary, as it looks like a couple of Adepts and Hellions have broken the defenses already, and Four Bolt and Praxis X are in a hell of a lot of trouble. Majorino just resubbed seven months, baby! It says in chat, thank you so much. As well as thank you guys for helping us make this prize pool as awesome as possible. We started this tournament with a measly $100. We're up to 323 The Abyss actually donated $20 at some point. I'm sorry for missing that. Didn't check up. Says, da dum -tch. Chum, da dum cha, da da check, da da chick, lobstrosities. I I don't know, I don't know what that was, but I just probably butchered it all terribly and horrifically badly. Thank you either way for the twenty dollars to the prize pool, bringing us up to three hundred and twenty-three dollars. Matcherino, folks, if you're still listening, if you haven't taken off with the time delays kicked in, let me know. Are there any coupon codes remaining? Can we still push that? I know that we've used a lot of them. There can't, I can't imagine there's more than a handful left. People say we should call him Team Marstom. No, the, the rules, guys. The rules are we don't want to necessarily use, like, the first part of one person's name and the second half of the other, unless it's really cool. Like, Thermal Lance is cool because that's a thing that actually exists. That's, like, a real thing. And it works out well for, like, the Thermal Laser, right? So, I'm okay with that. We can bend the rules for that. But Marstom and Hazer, those are the worst suggestions I've ever seen in chat. Delete your accounts. Never! Try to contribute again. By the way, this drop out of practice is actually some substantial damage, but it's still not that much considering Major did pull the SUVs quickly. And the concern for this is looking at the worker count currently in play, it's just not looking good for our southern team. They lost a lot from that first attack. There's still pressure from these tanks. You know, practice X is sitting on 29 SUVs and never got to use his natural. Feels bad, man. I guess Major's not a whole hell of a lot more himself at 36, but he's got an army supply to support it, and more importantly, he's got this tank running around. Uh, War Prism making some DTs and even an Archon to support this. That Archon by the way gets scooped up, and that tank and the Medivac barely get away alive. 
But I'm surprised it's just one Archon. He may have been trying to get two and the, the timing of that attack was just right. He may be like, Major, you idiot, why did you bring them this direction? I don't know, but I think two Archons have got some killing power. Unfortunately, one does not, so there's that second DT warped in. There you go. Major Stim? No, because that's the worst Harsim's name in that. You guys, come on. You gotta get better names than this, man. <coughs> Alright, so we didn't actually have DTs be used for typical and classic DTs, but the Archons are a pretty big deal. The splash damage, I almost want to call these guys Team Splash Damage. Team Team Water Slide, because it's all about that splash? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, the tank in that first medevac went down. Nice pick off here out of practice X. You got Harsim still with those Archons tentative to go in. Really, he could take a good fight if he were given the opportunity, but really has not been given the opportunity. Two kills on this Liberator down here to the south. That gets picked off and pushed back by the Queen pretty quickly. Still alive, however. Harsim now follows up with an actual push. Lots of adepts on the way. He's got those resonating glaives. He's got that plus one. And these Archons have got a lot of splash damage. Major has got to support this, though. Harsim, as good as Protoss is, can't 2v1 this. There's a lot of lanes, there's a lot of roaches. The warp prism goes down, so no reinforcements, and that tank can't really contribute much. The Archons have already been removed from the equation, and this doesn't go so well for our pro players. Meanwhile, the Marines do not have combat shield. I suppose Major, I guess, had put so much dedication and focus in this tank drop. A little bit of lost time from that defense on that natural, but his stim times out pretty well with the plus one. He'll have that going for him. A lot of Marines to go with these adepts should be some pretty good damage. Army supplies speaking, everyone is on the same page except for poor practice. He's just a little bit suffering from that early game income. And I guess the Econ hitting him harder than even he may have expected. Not a lot of anti-air here, awkwardly and honestly, so Major had kind of abandoned ship and pulled back. I guess there was a drop heading up here. He saw that coming to side, so the production should be enough. Brings those Marines back to the front line. Tanks awkward and out of position. I'm not sure what's going on with Major here, but he's got to get into the fight. Harsum cannot fight this alone. The Adepts decide to shade on through, and that Liberator still remains untouched. Nothing shooting that out of the sky. But Harsum does manage to take out the tanks. He also transfers on top of the Ravagers. It looks like the pro players will push through once again. Ooh, I like this suggestion out of Destiny Chopsticks. What about Team Harstim? Like Major Stim Pack from the Marines and Team Harstim. I like that. That's not bad. I don't know Crusher City suggestion. Harstim is Dutch, Major's from Mexico, so I vote Team Stroop, Stroop Taco. <laughs> what? What is a Stroop Taco? Uh, Adepts transfer on over and they are going to kill pretty much everything. The Marines just kind of end up being cleaning up to this. The uh, tank's not going to stand up for too much more. And I do think that that early game income was just a little bit too much for poor practice to recover from. Spent too long with too little army supply. Not to mention just how strong Adepts are in the first place. Good game. Gets called in. Team Harstim will take the first map of this best of three. Hard Stim. Hard Stim is better than Hard Stim. Destiny Chop 6 one up his suggestion. That's it, guys. I'm going with Team Hard Stim. Team Hard Stim. I like it. I like it a lot. By the way, there are apparently 11 promotion codes left at this point. If you guys haven't already, do me a favor. Head over to that Macharino page. Type exclamation mark Macharino in chat. I'm going to show you guys how this works. I could play a commercial break. Normally, we'll do like a custom commercial here, okay? This is how you contribute to the prize pool. Let's make that bigger so it's easier to see. So first off, step one, sign in with your Twitch account. It's not going to do anything. It doesn't rob you of anything. I get these extra options because I'm admin. Ignore this. You guys can't see this normally. But you just hit here and click donate. When you get to the donate page, if you just type in butts, watch this. Oh, like magic, one dollar appears. And you just hit donate, you can write a message if you want. Boom, done. I apparently forgot to do that. So there we go. I just used up one of the codes. And uh, doing that will add some free stuff. Hard Revenge adds in another dollar. Says, you killed Lilikanine. I'm so happy. Here, take more of my money. Aw, rude. <laughs> uh, Lilikanine, rest in pepperonis, dude. Macharino also saying they might make a couple more codes. So that'll be cool. I hope that we can use them all up by the time this is over, but Team Hard Stim takes a very strong game one. Now we go to Shrines of Lizul.
for map two in this best of three. Cool, so we could get... Okay, this is awesome. They're willing to put 50 more promo codes out there, guys. So uh, if they... If we can use up the remaining 11 butts codes, they will create 50 more codes that we can then use to contribute more money to the prize pool because Matcharino is really slick and sexy like that. So guys, please do me a favor. Go use up every single one of those butts. Grab all the butts that you can while you can. Butts are the best, after all. And we'll get that code situation sorted. All right, that being said, I do want to point out all the teams have made it this far, so not too bad going through the 2v2 brackets. But the first place prize is where the money is. And as it currently stands, once again, I will remind everybody that if we can get $500 raised today, we will create a second place prize and split the prize pool $400 slash $100. We're at $326 now. We're well over halfway. I think it's totally possible if some people are willing to dig deep and everyone uses those codes. That being said, though, if we don't reach that account number... That account number? If we don't reach that number, then all the prize money will go to the first place team only. <coughs> Excuse me. As I continue to cough out my lungs here. Solo cast hype! Got Matt Trino in chat begging for somebody to teach him the ways of Legacy of the Void. Let me tell you how Legacy of the Void works, man. You load it up and you go to the co-op gameplay mode instead of any other gameplay and you enjoy the game more than you ever have before. <laughs> I still think team aspects, 2v2s, 4v4s, etc. Like those are all great, but co-op has been without a doubt one of my favorite things. And if there was a way to broadcast or like create a competition at a co-op, I think I would. The only thing I can think of would be something where you have people submit their times, like who can clear out a mission in a certain amount of time the fastest, or I don't know. But unfortunately, we still have no way to broadcast the games. So it kind of sucks. Anyways, we're getting back into it. Game number two in this best of three. Winning team plays against you Thermal and a laser in that grand finals. On the left side of the map, it's going to be the combination of the player's four bolts and his ally practice. Practice bolts. And in the top right, we've got the combination of Harstum and Major. AKA Team Hard Stim. Now, the map is a little bit more daunting, actually, just at a glance. The fact that they all spawn in their own bases in four different sides of the map, I mean, there's a little bit of consolidation. Like, the entrances are near one another, so it's not like you're completely screwed trying to get from one base to the other. But this is where I think a team up situation works out really well. On the one map where we saw you thermal have to deal with the cheese from Lily Kanin and Hate Marine, that kind of worked because both players were right there and able to fight. This is a situation where if they were rushing across the map with Reapers and Lings, you know, Major wouldn't be able to easily get to Harsom's base. Harsom would only have like one adept to bring two Majors base. I feel like control of this ramp could be huge if anyone was heading that direction. That being said, the two gate opener is not too strange. I'm a little bit more curious, but practice is opener and he takes the second gas very quickly. It's only one barracks though. So I don't really know what he's planning to do with all this extra gas he'll have available. Either a faster factory to a faster starport, or I don't know, but either way, he does manage to not wall off, so it's a little bit awkward. His Hearthstone, I think, initially moves away and says, okay, well I guess I can't I guess I can't do that then. Then goes back in for the scout saying, oh wait, yes I can. And he scouts both gases. So this is gonna raise some red flags. And I imagine he's probably saying, Major, Poppy, what's going on, man? Like how do I what's this mean? Two gases? WTF? Now that being said, Harsim's actually a really smart player and he doesn't need to say that. I'm just saying it for comical effect, okay? But either way, uh, the starports, the factories, they're all en route. In fact, he's actually going to go straight up mech. Practice, that is. And this, I don't believe, was revealed. I think the second... Yeah, the second factory went down well after Harsim was out of the base. Major, on the other hand, is going to be going for a tank opener or maybe even a cyclone if he's really worried about aggression. But either way, it's 2v2. And frankly, the normal dynamics of how things interact really don't apply here. So it looks like Major's also going to be going mech with his barracks floating out like this to scout. We are going to straight up have mech versus mech, boys. Magfield Accelerator versus Magfield Accelerator. This is going to be really cool, actually. I don't know how this would work with the dynamic of Protoss. I 
Uh, by the way, it looks like all the codes have been used up, totaling our prize pool to $336. Thank you guys for helping us use up the remaining butts and grabbing what little was left. We'll get a new promo code sorted, and we'll let you guys know here shortly. But I am going to try and focus on the game first. I'm just going to tell them, make it whatever. And uh, we'll let you guys know what the new promo codes are afterwards. Mashrino being generous and just throwing out a couple more codes to celebrate us using up all 100 is a really nice and generous feature. Now, high ground... High ground provision provided by the barracks is really cool here. This is where I talked about the gang up potential, right? Major actually can't come down his ramp to help Harstam here due to the Lings kind of policing the middle of the map. However, if he doesn't, Harstam will eventually lose the Cyber Core. He starts up another one, I think, realizing that that's going to be the case. So he's not going to take any risks with this. But I really like the fact that he's bulking up these oracles at home. Because on one hand, he could go across the map. And there would actually be very low chance of defending against an oracle. However, two oracles can focus on a cyclone very, very quickly. Maybe not three cyclones, but this is getting to that point where that bonus damage versus light is going to be incredible. Major, by the way. Oh, I love this. There's still a gap created by these Cyclones firing away, and he lands the barracks to try and make sure the Lings can't simply flood in. But three Cyclones start tearing down these gateways like nobody's business. Harsim doesn't have Warp Gate, unfortunately, with the Cyber Core having been taken down like that, and rushing out. We'll see if this works. He wants to transfer the Adepts through. He wants to take this fight. Mage's gonna ch chase after the Cyclones. The Oracles as well, on top of the Cyclones. They kill their opponent's Cyclones with patience. And unfortunately, another one joins the front line. Harsim's Oracle gonna fall apart. Ling's winning out over this. And I do believe this is getting a bit rough for Team Hard Stim. In fact, the Ling's might just be too much at this point. Major doesn't have Hellions coming across the map anytime soon. The Depots were down. He pounces and catches another Cyclone. This Cyclone, by the way, can absolutely help kill this Depots if he wants to get this down. The Adept's going to transfer around, but Meandering may be their worst enemy at this point. Getting into Harstam's base, I think the only reason they're not going for it is because they, they think there's going to be a Mothership Core. They think there's going to be an Overcharge. Either way, they could have taken advantage of it. They don't. They take advantage of this side. Major, nothing left to remain. Only a few Cyclones popping out. Each of those Cyclones will be picked off by Practice's own Cyclones. That's it, Major's SCV is now gone. Harstam, not really a lot he can work with here. I love the idea of the Oracles. They almost worked. This almost was the perfect counter out of the team. But Major's got two SCVs remaining. A second command center that's been stalled out. And these guys are just being chased down to their death. I think that the map played to the favor of the players who have played a lot more 2v2. And frankly, I really love seeing the thought process of Harstam and Major. Just didn't quite cut it. Tapping out of this game, Major's the first one to leave. Harsa throws the GG down for him, and looks like we will be going to our... What was this, like the first game three of the entire tournament? <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to go commercial break. I'm going to figure out what the new codes are with the Matcherino, and we'll advertise those when we get back. Thank you for watching. Don't go anywhere. Game three of Hard Sim versus Practice Bolt when we return. All right, we're back, ladies and gentlemen, and we actually have a brand new coupon code created apparently this one came as per a suggestion in chat and if you guys go to the Matcherino page still the same page it hasn't changed but apparently if you use the code shazbot <laughs> who suggested shazbot shazbot is the new code for coupons so if you guys have not already taken a moment please if you've already donated a dollar you've done your job okay you're a great human being but for those of you who haven't had a chance to contribute to the prize pool once again it won't you won't need to provide any payment information you don't have to give them your paypal you don't have to give them your credit card it's awesome you just create one dollar poof out of thin air as matt Chirino will donate one dollar to the prize pool on your behalf if you use the coupon code shazbot so make sure to stop over to the page and do it. We've already had 100 people redeem that first set of codes. We're up to $337 now. Let's see if we can get that a little bit higher. Spawning here, though, in the top right side of Fields of Death, it's going to be the combination of Harst Harstim and Major Team Hardstim. And in the bottom left side of the map, we got the combination of Thor Bolt and Practice X. Now, Major and Harstam, I think, are the ones we favored going to this. We've seen so many 2 zeros today, I just assumed that would be the case once again. And with that second map, like, really smart decision-making, this, that, and the other, it looked like Major and Harstam had that defense, like, under wraps. But, no, man, I think the map was too much, and congratulations to 4 and Practice X for taking advantage of that. Now we find ourselves in our very first, like, ace match today. 
And the question goes through, like, what can we see next? Now, I think a lot of people in chat were, like, astonished. Two games in a row, and Hearthstone didn't throw down, like, two Stargates for the opening? Like, what on earth is that? And let's that, that, go back to the old 2v2 meta that we used to see, where Stargates were just so goddamn powerful. And then not even in terms of, like, surprise element. You don't need oracles. Although, I guess mass oracles would still be pretty good. You don't need anything like that. Just lots of Phoenix. Lots of anything that comes out is pretty nice. <coughs> Excuse me, I was just confirming that Shazbot was the right code. Yep, I just checked it myself, so make sure you guys use Ch Shazbot. Shazbot, if you haven't already. Now, blue and purple, unfortunately, make for a little bit of a difficult color scheme to see, but Major, of course, is the barcode, and he's the one giving chase to this very weak Reaper Commander Braxis X. The Adept pairing up with this is actually really nice, too. Actually, God, one one Adept and one Reaper can do a crazy amount of damage, I think. And this is a wall-off. They didn't realize that. Now they do. Either way, Lings and a couple Reapers, a couple Marines. Yeah, there's just not a lot to stop, but it's a very small amount of poke that could turn into very deadly amounts of poke if left unattended. So, Major going to be dancing around a little bit. Almost goes the wrong way. Decides to fall back with Harstam's Adept. The Adept, of course, could have transferred through. Chose not to. Playing a little bit more safe. Two adepts now out, and if he gets these to that mineral line with that reaper, oh my god, I just realized the dynamic of this is like adepts on top of SCVs, not drones, okay, but on top of SCVs, they'll have one health remaining. If the reaper shoots once, if the reaper shoots just one time, those adepts will start two shotting instead of three shotting all over again. Anyways, that wall's still not done. Bit of an issue here. Major now pairs this up with Hellions, and Hellions and adepts. It's not a large force, but make no mistake, this is some dangerous, dangerous action. Four Hellions. Hell, the Widowmine may even eat one of these up. Oh, he's staying so far away from I don't know if he actually knows this is a Widowmine, by the way, guys. But the Slowlings can't contest. There's just no way. No chance to survive. Make your time. Reaper goes down. Looks like the Adepts are kind of being dealt with, but the Oracle comes in to back up these Hellions. And, you know, even though this isn't killing a lot of drones yet, this has forced out so many Lings. So many slow, ineffective Lings, building three more Queens at a time. Four Bolts not building a huge drone count up behind this. And look at that. Using their opponent's choke to their advantage, Major fries all those Lings alive. And now there really is nothing to stop this. Excuse me. Couple Marines. But they line up perfectly, so one shot just melts and incinerates every single one of them. Major can go to the natural. I think he's staying away from it because he knows there's a spine crawler there. But man, oh man, these guys have got some serious damage. Cost effective, to say the least. Dipping into that natural base is not an option, but into the main, it certainly is. And it looks like a couple drones do get roasted and toasted. I think they finally cleaned this up, but the problem now is like, what's coming up next? Right? Like, Harsom over here gets about four kills with the Oracle. Both of them are on three bases. Well, excuse me, that's not a base. Two bases and three bases apiece. I got a little ahead of myself and excited looking at the mini-map. But Hardsome's taking his third as we speak. Major could easily take his fourth here. There are back rocks and only one entrance into the natural. So there's not too many different uh, different angles which they could get attacked. Banshee, on the other hand, is getting some damage done. Not a lot of drones to kill, unfortunately, when you've already killed a ton of drones. <laughs> the Oracle even comes over here looking for a base. Unfortunately, only one was taken so far. And there's no, no SCVs over here either. Just the uh, everyone huddling around that one turret because that's all they can really do for the time being. But he holds position outside of range of it. And even if the cloak wears off, the marines are still going to have a hard time chasing this. In fact, just picking up in the medevac may be the best course of option to get them on top of that. Banshee quick enough, but tags each of them once. Doesn't get a lot done for it. Other side of the map, I guess some widow mines went off, but judging by how low those SCVs are. But I don't think that should be too much of a problem. I get could... the units lost work here. They do. Okay, so there wasn't Oda mine. It was just strictly a lot of Marines and I guess a Reaper grenade or something. I don't know. Either way, uh, bit of damage done. Not a lot of SCVs lost. Major still sitting on 46 workers. We find ourselves in that situation once again that looks a little reminiscent to that first game where Practice X is behind on workers and by a fairly significant amount. We saw how much that hurt the production and how little he had to bring to the mid game party. Four bolts not doing too bad, but. Honestly, with Harsom having 59 probes out, he's winning the income war himself almost single-handedly. Not by massive amounts over here, but just in terms of like the fact that he was able to comfortably get to that work account. You know, no, no counter pressure whatsoever. And sitting here now in the sky with a couple oracles and a phoenix. All right, some Vikings set up here 
as well. Looks like Major is preparing in case there is going to be some sort of anti-air push. I guess that's something you would be a little worried about, but normally because, you know, you're Terran and alone and solo. This is actually a situation where Harstum has got plenty of Phoenix to cover him. So you don't have to worry about this Metavax. You don't have to worry about the potential mutas. I actually find it real. I'm just going to say, I think it's actually really weird Major win for that many Vikings, but... Either way, just kind of hides them in the corner, and I don't think they'll be a, a detriment to his army. There's a lot of, yeah, a lot of Hellbats. Yeah, Pummer, you can't hold up the blue flame. It's a little too hot. Burns so hot that that's why it's that color, after all. Although, if they put a little bit of copper in the mix, green flame Hellions would be really cool. Although, with the amount of World of Warcraft I've been playing lately, if I saw green flame Hellions, I'd be like, FELL! It's fell energy! The demons are coming! <laughs> Shout out to anyone who plays World of Warcraft, by the way. Fucking love that game. I streamed my raids this weekend. It was pretty good times. Did the uh, normal and the heroic versions. Uh, looks like Hellbats won't be able to chase these down the way they wanted to. But damn, that was a lot of damage in one shot. and gets a little bit scary. The Oracles are still alive. Got Hellbats down here. Major just kind of picking apart 4-bolt as much as he can. That being said, their army supplies continue to bulk up, and Major, I think with the amount of mech he's bringing to the party, should be able to take on the Zerg no problem, and Harstum ideally, in the perfect world, should be able to take on the Terran no problem, creating a really nice complementary force, as there'll be a couple of tanks out that you can either transfer the Adepts onto, or just take out all the Marines with. I like the idea of these Banelings, by the way. Those will tear through the Hellbats pretty easily, but most importantly, if, there's, if those Banelings rather than run to the front lines sit on top of the tanks and babysit them from the adept transfer then harstum's advantage is kind of gone he won't be able to use those the way he wants to so practice x and four bolt have a really nice push coming across the map but once again for harstum and major this is a considerable amount of tanks there's a lot of phoenix here that could pick up those siege tanks actually if he lands those siege tanks out there if the phoenix and the vikings don't snipe off the medevacs they can pick up the tanks and the Vikings can shoot the tanks while the Phoenix hold them in the sky. Again, that really nice compliment that is ally mode in StarCraft 2. A Colossus is out as well. That's actually one Colossus, perhaps not going to do so much, but I think two Colossus and two to three siege tanks, that splash damage is going to be insane. In fact, I'm going to say that splash damage is probably going to look straight up broken. Now, some interesting comments out of chat. Odom says, it doesn't feel like they're abusing anything, but just somehow playing like they're two times better. And the emphasis on this comes down to what you can do for multitasking. You're watching the APMs of the players, and they're like, oh, it's not that different. Four Bolt's actually got a ton of APM. He must be moving around fast. But it's about the intention to drop a tank, do some Hellbat harass, and simultaneously build a lot of SCVs and keep your macro up at home. And I think that's really where... It's, it's such a subtle part of the game. It's hard to watch. It's hard to notice. It's not something the camera can just simply pick up. But that is where I think these players really shine through with their strengths. Like Harstam and Major. 1v1 players. You throw them in a laser. 1v1 players. And they're the top of their game. And a lot of that has to do with refining their macro play over years and years of play. Like, they don't see a lot of these attacks coming. They're not, they're not predicting anything so insane they're just playing solid behind it stasis trap traps some of the lanes nice catch on this side the medevacs have to be dealt with however major back here defending against this leaves harstum to play 1v1 against the zerg on this side of the lines and i think with the colossus out harstum should be okay he's got extended thermal lens finishing up here in just a second not out just yet banley's might make it through to that probe line it's tempting it's scary he wants to do it Drops, by the way, have finally been cleaned up. Combination overcharge. There's one medevac remaining. The Vikings could go back to it, but there's so much action going down. Both players, I'm sure, are scattered and looking around the map. Harsim actually ends up giving up the gold for this, but catches a lot of units on the way out, and these should be pretty much freebies once that stasis trap expires. I made a joke about co-op mode earlier, too, by the way. In co-op mode, you can actually research something for Vorzen, I think. I think it's Vorzen. I'm actually having a brain fart here. Pretty sure it's Vorzen, where you can make it so you can attack the units caught in stasis trap. I'm so glad that doesn't exist for regular StarCraft. I say regular StarCraft with like air quotes. But I think this is going to be the big push. 130 army supply, 139 army supply at a Hearthstone Major. 112, 165 for practice X and 4 bolt. It looks pretty grim, guys. It looks pretty freaking grim. It's going to take some serious mistakes and a lot of good bailing hits for this game to turn around. But I actually don't even know if there's enough bailings for each of the... Hellbats, much less the Adepts. There's Stalkers in this too. Harsim, of course, has Blink. 
taking that frontline fight. You can't even see the Marines on the creep. It's so disgusting. But the Banley's jump from the south side. They take out the Adepts. Colossus get a little bit weak. I love the flank set up out of here from Four Bolt, but is it going to be enough? The air army doesn't stand a chance with those Vikings, and it looks like, yeah, Colossus and Tanks is just a little bit too much splash damage for anyone to handle. I will say, though, Four Bolt set up a great surround. Practice X with his own tanks, taking a better fight than even I could have expected. That being said, it still just simply wasn't enough. And uh, nicely done here by the team. Hard stip. <laughs> By the way, it looks like a lot of those Shazbot promo codes got used up. I was going to give a big shout out to Rooks1, donates $15 to the prize pool. Wonderpika donates $5 as well, bringing our new prize pool up to $396. If we can get $100 more, dollars, guys, we'll create a second place prize. But right now, that close to $400 is still winner's take all. <coughs> Excuse me as I have a cough at the end of that game. But congratulations to Hearthstone and Major. They will now go on to the Grand Finals where they'll face off against Euthermal and a Laser. This time around, the guess, uh, with all five maps being available, it'll simply be an order of picks. There are no vetoes available. And we'll find out who plays on what map first. But we are going to go to a commercial break while I get this sorted. Remember, check out the Matcherino page. Thank you to those of you who have been generous enough to donate. Let's see if we if we can get $100 more during the course of the finals. That would make me a very happy camper to create a second place prize. Quick reminder that I, I am not taking a single cent of this. Matcherino is not taking a single cent of this. There's no profit to be earned from this. In fact, this is actually a terrible business decision. But it does get the players more money, and that makes me happy at the end of the day. So stick around, folks, and we'll see you in two minutes.